Hello and welcome back in other waters. Let's go to Habitat. I didn't, we didn't pick it up. That's why we are not doing anything about it because we didn't pick it up. It makes sense. It doesn't seem. It's definitely has super moon I guess we can for it. Interesting. Don't you remember with then through this conversation? So it's like maybe I went up to past. I did go for from pickup. But we've done this before. Don't you remember? Glad you are back online. I've got a question. Did you use one of those sparkling samples we gathered? Because we need all four. Uh, yeah. Oh, we need those. There's no way I can build that microbial full cell with any less than four. So we are going to need to go back out to the forest and get more. Sorry. Let's hold on to them this time. I think I used all of them. One, two, we have three. Wait, so, my probial. We have one. No, that's not it either. No, this is sparkling. Yes, we need four of them. So we must. Oh, uh, I will leave everything since we might need them. So we need to go back to the central reef. Just a little detail, I was thinking about getting more of them anyway. Although it is strange that she didn't remember we've already been through the conversation with Jay's in the suit. 
And maybe our systems are failing. We can get through easily for that, so we need to gather some of those. Some more fuel sacks. If I remember correctly, it was somewhere over there. Very close, yep. Only one. Luckily, this is all we need. Hey, you ready to go back to work? Sure. Great, because I've had a very productive few hours. I've been working on the propulsion system. I've used those four microbial samples to grow a new colony in the lab. Then I transferred it to a secure containment capsule, nice and snug. I followed what I could from Minaya's notes on building a microbial fuel cell. It's all loaded in onto the suit. NFC fed directly from our reserve oxygen supply. Now we just need to take the suit out for life and to test it. It's going to take plenty of oxygen to fill the colony, so bring any samples that will help out. But make sure not to take any that will put a few analysis on the lab level first. I don't want to burn through hours of precious material just to get a point of this. This propulsion system will get us let us pass through strong currents and move more quickly. We should be able to cut across the third node of the way station and see what the bloom finally is. Ready when you are. So we didn't need four at all. When I met her on Kepler 68, she was intense and quiet, but calculated and intelligent. She wasn't someone to take unnecessary risks to leap into unknown. At first, I found her impossibly intimidating. Her experience working as a biologist far outstripped my own. Bicob brought me to the site as a consultant to examine her discoveries, but I felt like they weren't under examination. The base was much like this one. A smaller, older model sunk in a subglacial ocean. Someone might think a relationship was inevitable, given those intim intimate conditions. But it wasn't the base that brought me to her. It was that intensity. Over the few, ye few years since, I've tried not to dwell on what happened on Kepler 6 to F, but being in here, living where she has lived, following her scattered steps, it is impossible not to remember. So we need to look at up there, but honestly, I want to go down, we go down here, I want to go down here, and here. So we go, we go to the central reef first. So, okay, so you'll find the controls in the utilities where something and everything else is. Wait, no, yes, I see. Once you've found out the propulsion system, let's try it out. But remember, it uses oxygen. Be careful. 
When you've got the hang of it, let's try to cross the northern rift. Is this really hard? Hmm? Maybe we have something. We have one here. I'm gonna use it for oxygen. No, it is not. Uh, I don't quite remember how we can get it to. Okay, I think it's. The central rift is deep and wide, and the current went down. It is relentless. Spores and other particles leave greasy streaks on the face plate and the helmet as they hammer into it. The suit creaks as I lean into the floor, and the unbroken walls ahead suggest nothing worth risking my life for. This mushroom-shaped stock covers beside the rift, its cap uh, broken on segments of it sit in the sand, which is something like here. And we could use the oxygen as well. This is a very nice experience. And I think we've got the hang of it. Now all that's left is go back to base. Replenish both health, health, power and oxygen. And we can try look for another sample. Problem getting back. Oh, oh no, this panel opened. Now we have lots of oxygen in this reserves in our reserves.
Although I can't even tell. Oh, we are going. I keep focusing on the little circle we use our radar instead of looking at the bigger picture. Somewhere or something we need to get. I'm trying to get up. To try and get up the right yes, up here. The walls here have been smooth and with soft ripples. The sign is strong current descending from the north. This will stop. It stops. This stops block the gully but also the strong current behind. Even if we pull them, those points will still block our passage. This western shelf is buffered by currents, rendering them with a scattering of swirling spores. Broken shelf of the roof reaches out towards the deep like hand. This is the first of three fingers which marks the edge. Here, Earth needs to expose the roof edge. What caused this huge slashing to show up showing not just erosion? The sheer walls of the reef plunge into the dark water here and let the currents. Across the channel is a gap in the rock wall. If the strong current slashing down the reef can be navigated, we can cross it here. A shattered section of the wall across allows passage into the outlet. This section of the shelf, sheltered by the tall headland to the north, is strange or peaceful. Which means we can oh, Beyond this thickly entwined stock, a veiled current can be heard rushing down through a gap in the headland. The water is funneled by the rocks into the clearing, making it hard going against the rush. Battered by the water, these stalls cling to the rocks. A single creature braves the current to graze on the twisted walls. Attached to the side of this shelf, this cannot be partially bent by the current. If we are careful, we can something on the top. Boulder protects the mouth of its passage from the iron Russian waters. Little streams of sand pack through gaps in the rocks here, driven deep into cracks by the current to the north. This gap between the rocks will passage both into and out of its exposed second finger the reef. Another reef separates the second and third fingers of the reef, looked over by a ragged stalk comet that sheds particles into the flow. The current here is both exhilarating and terrifying, like standing in a pit of a moon. 
This long rift tunnel is the strongest current now, bringing all the way to the nurseries of the south. some samples let's see what this can be this, this, and this nope actually already had that in the lab Laboratory studies of the growths found in the upper canopy reveals that they contain the genetic material of tens of different species. These growths hold within their round casings uh, seeds from many species local to the table stalks, as well as spores for the reproduction of the stalk colonies themselves. Fed by a carefully maintained flow of the correct minerals and chemicals, these seeds and spores are preserved by the stalks kept viable for long periods. Could these seed banks be a complex example of collective serotonin? On Earth, some plants hold viable seeds until an environment trigger, such as a wildfire or disease, causes their release. Perhaps the stalks are preserving the local ecology in case of an environmental disaster. Are they the guardians of this reef? Analysis of reef cap tissue show that the reef caps maintain a bacterial symbiont within a series of internal chambers which, while unique to Gli 667cc, resembles Epilopiscum, a large celled bacteria found in the stomachs of terrestrial surgeon fish. Epilopiscum helps surgeon fish break down algae effectively, and the reef caps bacteria seems to do the same. With traces of algae-like growths found with the caps chambers. Where is this algae coming from? However, the caps receive it. This algae is allowing the caps to grow bacterial colonies, which then reduce themselves to endospores when the algae is digested. These endospores are then released to the stalks in the local area to renew the strength of their colonies. It's an incredible recycling system to offer protecting this ecosystem. And this is how we're gonna end this part. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!